Two companies taking heat after bowing to the left. Israel launching a pressure campaign against Ben & Jerry's over its decision to boycott Israeli settlements in the West Bank, while a Coca-Cola executive refused to condemn China's human rights abuses during a heated Senate hearing on Tuesday. Ben Shapiro is author of the new book, The Authoritarian Moment, and host of The Ben Shapiro Show on The Daily Wire, which gets me back and forth as I walk to work um, and listen to you every day. Ben, um, what do you think about this Ben and Jerry situation. I know that in theory, you know, you've been against boycotts, but this time, what do you think? You know, the the fact is that I, I was against boycotts maybe 10 years ago. And now because the left keeps renormalizing all of these institutions, turning all of these corporations into basically weapons of the woke, this means that everybody who doesn't want to see that happen, if you want to see corporations go back to neutral, we're going to have to establish some form of mutually assured destruction here where we say, listen, you guys go woke, you go broke. And, and if you want to go back to neutral, then we will start patronizing your product again. But the problem is that there's a vast asymmetry in which the left decides that they are going to weaponize corporations against people who disagree. And then the right says, well, you know, we're against boycotts. Well, that sort of asymmetry ends with the renormalization of every one of these corporations in favor of the left. And that has to stop, obviously. What do you think will happen in, this, in the end on this Ben and Jerry's front? Uh, it seems like Unilever it has no incentive to continue a uh, broader boycott of, of Israel. Um, I think that states are going to start using anti-discrimination laws uh, to, to crack down on Ben and Jerry's. And for folks who don't understand that, states do have the wherewithal to crack down on corporations that violate, for example, anti-discrimination laws with regard to racism. That's also true for anti-Semitism. That is, that is why Ben and Jerry's is running afoul of the law in certain states. Uh, I think that Ben and Jerry's is unlikely to back down. But Frankly, I think that Israel doesn't need Ben & Jerry's ice cream. I think there are plenty of other brands they can use. Yeah, there's use. plenty. Of, that's right. I also wanted to ask about this. Senator Tom Cotton was um, basically grilling the human rights uh, guy at Coca-Cola yesterday about China. Watch this. Senator, we, we stand up for what is right across the world. We apply the same human rights principles in the United States that we do across the world. Every single one of you refused to say a single word by all appearances that will cost you one bit of market share inside of mainland China. Thoughts on that, Ben? I mean, that's that's obviously true. The, the great lie with regard to opening China is that it would moderate China if we opened our markets to them and got them to open some of their markets to us. Instead, China very clearly under Xi Jinping sees the opening of the markets as a weapon to use against American corporations, converting American corporations into propaganda outfits just to guarantee the market share. You can blame corporations for that, but in the end, it's gonna have to be governments like the United States government, like the governments of the EU, that unify and, and isolate China economically. Otherwise, corporations are gonna be in a sort of race to the bottom in terms of value because they frankly can't afford not to do business in China if all of their competitors are. And it reminds me of one of my favorite sayings. If, if there's a race to the bottom, somebody could win it, uh, indeed. Also, I wanted to ask you about this. National Review wrote, um, why they hate Ben Shapiro and us, basically saying if you pay attention to the left's pundit and intellectual class, the people they hate more than anyone, the targets that really raise their blood pressure, are conservatives who are educated, conservatives who are well-spoken or well-read, conservatives who speak the language of the upper middle class. Ben, you have a new book out, The Authoritarian Moment. What are you trying to get across to here that might be driving the left a little crazy? I mean, the, the basic point that I make in The Authoritarian Moment is that Everybody, right, left, and center, with the exception of the far left, feels ostracized and isolated in modern American society. You say the wrong thing, you end up basically wished into the cornfield. There's going to be blowback to that because the institutions have been taken over. Nearly every major American institution has been taken over by the left. The people on the left don't really like when you notice this. They would prefer that we all focus in on members of the authoritarian right who represent a pretty small contingent. Uh, they, they don't like it when you, when you actually take note of the fact that serious institutions with serious power to wield against Americans are using that power to crack down on political dissent, which is why it's incumbent on us to notice it and to fight back against it. Um, oh, maybe a quick thought from you about the new... Uh, apparently the mask mandates could be coming back. Insane. Insane. I mean, the CDC is not basing this on any level of science. According to the CDC's own statistics, 161 million Americans have been vaccinated. We've had about 6,000 breakthrough cases resulting in hospitalization, which means that your chance of being hospitalized thus far in the United States, if you're vaccinated, your chance of being hospitalized about one in 27,223. And on the basis of this, we are now asking people who are vaccinated to mask up to protect everybody else who already has had the chance to get vaccinated. Right. And by the way, I'm not seeing right. the, the unvaccinated screaming for the vaccinated to mask up. I'm seeing vaccinated members of the CDC screaming for the vaccinated right. to mask up. Ben Shapiro, good luck with the book. We loved having you. I hope you ha come back. Thank you. Thanks so much.